Okay, can we begin? Yes, we may begin now. As a teacher and a mother, I believe parents want to see their child's future and worried why they spend too much time on screen playing games. How nice if they can create their own games at early age instead of just playing. If parents are aware that career in computing is highly in demand, but supply is not enough today, surely parents would invest in the future of their children. Let me treasure this opportunity with you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Raja Suzana Raja Kasim, a founder and CEO of Smart Seed Resources. There is a lack of supply of talent where only 8% of STEM graduates are in computer science, while close to 70% new jobs are available in computing. This leads to 3.5 million of STEM jobs will go unfilled. Is it ever possible now if we offer you a solution? Imagine, yeah, uh, all this is actually opportunity where Smart Seeds is an inclusive program with affordable fee to develop future talent of your child from learners to maker. Imagine at the age of 13, your child can develop their own apps and game design. How does it work? You can select the package, go for one-on-one -on -one session online and be certified. We offer a practical, base module with affordable fees, no coding required in just 60 minutes. Our prospective target market is of 10% derived from 5 million of primary and secondary school students while gradually expanding opportunity to ASEAN and global market. We conducted an online market survey with 90 parents. Of those, 60% were concerned about their child's future and stated that the fee is reasonable. Some 60% of the parents have even agreed to enroll their child into the session. We are happy to learn that more than 60% have agreed to register into learner, thinker, and maker levels. The team is made of myself as the CEO and founder of Smart Suite Resources with dynamic talent in coding and programming without code with more than 20 years of experience in helping learners achieve their learning outcomes. We even have a certified STEM, My STEM Ambassador team comprised of alumni of our university, graduates who had been trained in coding for kids. They serve as volunteers in this ecosystem, in coding without actually uh, no code yeah, for young people. So I'm available here at your disposal and you reach me at any time to learn more about what we can offer. Thank you very much for listening. All right, so that's it. Uh, with two minutes and around 40 seconds, so you are still below three minutes of in pitching. So, all right, so I will judge if there are any questions. For, okay, uh, uh, this is Zana. Assalamualaikum. My question uh, is, uh, is this pitch in still in the ideation stage or do you already have a business model implemented? Uh, we have the business model implemented. We just started okay, if it's, uh, if it's already implemented, if, sorry to speak over you, if it's already implemented, uh, what's the performance so far? Is it making money? We have been doing a CSR project all the while, right? But of course, uh, we have to uh, put all the costing right. The CSR project is uh, using the grant funding available from Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what are your plans in making it uh, sustainable without grants? Or is that the whole business model, reliance on grants? We've just started uh, this year for coding, but we have been long in STEM education. Uh, so putting that into mind, I think there are a number of uh, barriers in terms of, you know, parents uh, reluctant in Pantai Timor in particular. Yeah, if we have to compare rural and digital divide, so all the things need to be factored into our uh, program. So a lot of energy, of course, we need to generate income. Perhaps in uh, next year, we are mobilizing our talent. They become certified uh, my STEM ambassador for this program. Inshallah. Right. Thank you, Susanna. Okay, uh, I think there are other judges too. Uh, the floor is yours. Other judges, we have any questions to see Susanna. We still have time for Q&A. Ms. Susanna, if I may, um, for online classes like this, um, historically, we have 95% of drop rate. How do you plan to tackle that? Because at the end of the day, if you have too much drop rate, then it cannot sustain. Agreed. Precisely. <laughs> what we do is actually to make the, um, we have to play a game changer here, our interactive sessions, uh, we start with a specific uh, software tool, 
that actually connects the students to be part into you know into that it's not just about the coding but they have to be engaged into uh, you know a, a game and inside the game so they have to deliver because we offer um, a challenge at the end of every session and uh, we i think that helps to sustain the program inshallah so far we have conducted four four times uh, sempena bulan kebangsaan in month of uh, august and september uh, it shows a good response and even they have been requesting to conduct the session it's just in line with this program is my screen showing yeah yeah you can see your screen so All right. two oh. minutes begin once you start All right i'm going to start now um greetings and hello everyone i'm atika from good venture sarawak a single source of truth for all things social entrepreneurship. What is social enterprise or SE? Unlike traditional business, SE focuses more on creating positive impact rather than making a profit. Most SE in Malaysia are based in Khan Valley, while 7% of them are in Sarawak. And this figure continues to grow as we are seeing more participation in SE-related incubator and accelerator programs in Sarawak. However, based on our findings, many of them are having trouble sustaining their operations for more than a year due to scattered information when it comes to finding assistance, lack of resources such as funding, tools and skills, and lack of opportunity to network with other SE in the region. Good Venture Sarawak aims to address all these pain points by serving as a single source of truth for all things social entrepreneurship centralizing available programs, offering mentorship or networking opportunities, and other legal or admin services, so that the entrepreneurs can focus solely in making sales. A Good Venture Sarawak platform is currently live. You may access it through the link displayed in the slide. All these aforementioned services are readily available with just a few clicks. This platform will benefit all social entrepreneurs in Sarawak in every stages, whether they are only in ideation phase, in grassroots phase or have matured. Our platforms are hyper-localized to Sarawak audience with a design that is easy to navigate. And instead of competing with our competitors, we focus more on building collaboration with them to further maximize the values of each of our individual initiatives. We generate revenue by receiving commission from mentors and other services, by doing program coordination and also through collection of membership fee. Uh, this is our team from Good Venture Sarawak. If you'd like to contact us, feel free to reach out through the following information. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Atika. Uh, again, something similar also, but quite important. Is this still in the ideation stage? Yes, it's more like prototyping ideation stage. Yeah, the prototype is there, but it hasn't been um, conducted yet. Mm -hmm. So what's your, can, can you share with us your validation process again? I have collected a survey done on 22 social enterprises in Sarawak. And on top of that, I've also done interviews on 16 Sarawak-based social enterprises. It's not just social enterprises exclusively. We're also um, um, discussed with potential SPs, like other traditional businesses who are um, potentially trying to explore SP as well. Uh, among the questions that I asked during the validation process is um, what are the key challenges that the SE are currently facing? What are the difficulties that they have that prevents them from scaling up? What are the things like or the tools or services that are, they are willing to pay for? All right. And, so what, yeah. to what extent do you make your business sustainable? Um, we collect revenues uh, mostly from a commission. As one of our, uh, we're targeting one of the main services from this would be from uh, the client booking mentorship services right. or legal or administrative services. So when a client book them, we will get a certain percentage of the commission. All right. So uh, I'm sensing that there's a bit mix up here. Uh, are you providing consultancy in terms of helping out the new businesses or are you rather making a marketplace where you can scheme of uh, for, for every transaction. Would it you like to clarify? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that would be, uh, we would be the later. We are not the ones who will be directly providing these services, but we will get in touch with attorneys and other administrative assistants. Uh, so we serve as the middleman of this. So what we're trying to do is trying to centralize all of these available services so that the SE can uh, find a platform to easily get these services. Mm, okay. Well, what are your projections for the next five years? 
I don't have that. Sorry. It's okay. On on the top of your mind, do you see any potential in terms of the next five years? Um, I'm staying for the first three years. Uh, most uh, activities will be done solely for the marketing and promotion and getting to get that pool of clients first. Because um, social entrepreneurship is something pretty new in Sarawak, so we will take around three years to uh, to start um, drive the the wheel first to get the traction. And then the right. profit making will probably be projected to start on the next two years. All right, thank you, Atika. None from me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Memperkenalkan diri saya Siti Hazira binti Abdul Rahim. Dan ini adalah uh, perancangan lah komuniti saya iaitu reality tingkatkan prestasi. Dan ini adalah uh, logo program saya. Okay, kenapa saya wujudkan program ini? Yang pertamanya adalah berkaitan dengan uh, graduan pendidikan yang gagal ketika sesi temu duga pada tahun 2020. So, permasalahannya macam mana saya nak bantu mereka dalam sesi temu duga akan datang. Okay, so identiti komuniti yang saya dapat adalah uh, graduan ijazah sarjana muda pendidikan yang tidak berjaya dalam uh, sesi temu duga sesi 2020. So bagaimana saya nak atasi masalah ini? Yang pertamanya uh, ada empat kaedah lah uh, yang realiti ni bantu. Melaksanakan sesi pementoran secara virtual, perkongsian sesi temu duga, perkongsian soalan sesi temu duga, perkongsian teknik menjawab soalan sesi temu duga dan perkongsian daripada panel-panel yang berpengalaman. So apa kelebihannya? Kelebihannya kita ada sesi pementoran secara individu dan kita ada perkongsian daripada panel SPP sendiri dengan kerjasama daripada Universiti Awam dan uh, akhir sekali program ini adalah percuma. Uh, semata-mata untuk bantu rakan-rakan uh, yang tidak berjaya. So macam mana uh, mereka boleh uh, berkomuni- uh, boleh uh, mendapat maklumat tentang kita adalah melalui media sosial Instagram. Uh, Realiti tingkatkan prestasi. Okay so mereka hanya perlu DM lah untuk dap- uh, dapatkan maklumat. So kita akan salurkan mereka dengan saluran komunikasi melalui WhatsApp. Uh, kita akan berkomunikasi di dalam ni. Dan sesi pementoran secara face-to-face adalah melalui Webex. So ini adalah ringkasan soal selidik melalui panggilan telefon. Uh, apa faktor-faktornya? Yang pertama, tidak dapat menonjolkan diri ketika sesi juga. Yang kedua, mereka kurang yakin dari teknik menjawab soalan. Dan ada soalan yang sukar dan tidak dapat dijawab. Macam mana dia pun nak laksanakan. Dan kurang keyakinan diri. Yang ketiga, sesi temu juga berjalan dengan baik namun kurang respon. Maksudnya tidak outstanding lah. Okay, uh, itu sahaja daripada saya. Sekian, uh, terima kasih. Alright. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Azira. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Alright. So we have one minute uh, for Q&A. Thank you, Bong. Okay, uh, soalan saya kepada Azira uh, berkenaan dengan unique value proposition lah. Apa yang ditawarkan oleh realiti yang berbeza daripada Uh, tawaran-tawaran yang sedia ada dalam pasaran sebab sekarang ni kalau kita sekadar berikan bantuan, berikan panduan tak perlu sign up dengan reality dekat TikTok pun boleh ada so apa, what sets you apart? Uh, dekat sini uh, bagi saya lah uh, kelebihan ni yang pertama adalah sesi pementoran secara individu uh, untuk maklumat setakat ni uh, yang program-program yang diadakan dia hanya membagi tips dan taklimat tapi program uh, sesi pementoran secara individu ni kami adalah daripada orang-orang yang uh, mempunyai banyak pengalaman dalam sesi temu duga dan kita juga ada panel sendiri so sesi individu ni kita beri peluang kepada uh, kita punya customer pelanggan untuk hadir sendiri uh, temu duga so daripada situ kita akan perbetulkan konsep mereka di mana uh, aspek kekurangan body language, uh, teknik komunikasi ataupun ketika mereka betul-betul uh, stuck untuk jawab tak ada idea macam mana dia pun uh, nak nak, uh, nak apa nak kawal situasi macam tu ha, itu je lah uh, kita punya punya kelebihan salah satu okay, jadi uh, kenapa fokus lebih kepada temu duga Uh, kenapa tak fokus kepada memberikan peserta-peserta realiti uh, pengalaman bekerja atau pengalaman yang uh, pengalaman mengajar dalam kelas contohnya kita ada macam TFM kan 
So macam TFM, siapa join, dia memang dapat pengalaman kerja. Kenapa tak buat macam tu, kenapa fokus on temu duga sahaja. Okey, sebenarnya uh, graduan-graduan pendidikan ni mereka dah ada pengalaman temu duga yang cukup dan mereka dah ada latihan uh, pengajaran memang cukup. Kalau tanya fakta tentang pembelajaran, memang semua ilmu mereka ada. Cuma isunya uh, salah satu kriteria, bukan salah satu lah tapi itu adalah menghalang untuk menjadi seorang guru iaitu temu duga SPP. So memang uh, apabila seorang graduan pendidikan mereka graduate, so yang tinggal untuk menjadi guru hanyalah sesi temu duga. Uh, so sebab itulah saya fokuskan kepada sesi temu duga. Selain pada sesi temu duga, uh, apa pandangan Azira kalau fokus realiti ni beralih katakanlah nanti dapat uh, apa dapat pelaburan kan? Jadi bila pelabur-pelabur ni dia akan beri pandangan. Apa jadi sekiranya uh, fokus ataupun tumpuan realiti ni beralih daripada temu duga kepada matchmaking uh, antara Uh, peserta dengan peluang-peluang kerjaya? Uh, bagi saya yang tu bergantung kepada individu lah jika mereka berminat tapi bagi saya lah ini matlamat lah uh, sebagai seorang graduan pendidikan majoritinya adalah ingin menjadi seorang guru so tak, tak kisahlah sama ada guru swasta ataupun guru kerajaan tapi ini adalah salah satu langkah lah untuk membantu mereka uh, dalam dan juga dapat meningkatkan uh, keyakinan diri mereka sendiri juga. So sekiranya mereka menyertai program ini dan kemudian mereka nak bekerja di luar bidang, itu terserah kepada individu lah. Um, uh, uh, bila matchmaking tu, uh, soalan saya tu memang tak ada kaitan dengan kerja bidang lain lah. Memang kerja bidang perguruan juga. Cumanya bukan melalui SPP. Ha, tapi fahamlah. Uh, soalan terakhir saya, uh, um, kenapa tidak mengambil kira uh, suntikan semangat kusawanan dalam graduan-graduan pendidikan. Contohnya, you start your own uh, tuition services, uh, perkhidmatan tuition sendiri yang boleh buat secara online. Masih juga uh, dalam bidang pendidikan, masih juga mengajar okay, kepada Cik, pelajar. Uh, ya betul macam ni. Uh, sebenarnya graduan pendidikan ni, mereka semua uh, memang open market. Memang dibuka uh, daripada perniagaan, daripada uh, mana, mana-mana lah uh, bidang yang mereka ingin ceburi. Okay? Tak dinafikan. Macam saya sendiri pun sama. Saya keluar bidang pada awalnya. Tapi akhirnya apabila uh, graduan pendidikan ni, uh, impian mereka untuk menjadi seorang guru. Itu yang saya nak fokuskan uh, dalam perkara kali ini. So, sama lah. Daripada pengalaman saya sendiri pun sama lah. Uh, walaupun lari bidang akhir mana pun, akhirnya kita nak berbalik kepada apa yang kita ingin capai pada awalnya. Hmm. Sebab Jadi itulah saya, uh, ya, yeah, okey, hmm. sama. Jadi, jadi maknanya tawaran uh, Hazira ni lebih kepada that specific niche lah. Niche pasaran hmm. yang macam tu lah. Okey, hmm. uh, terima kasih banyak Hazira. Uh, kita buka juga peluang kepada uh, ni, pandai-pandai yang lain. Ada? Ada nak tanya ke? Hai Azira, saya ada dua soalan untuk Azira. Uh, saya Zia. Yeah, yang pertama uh, boleh share juga mengenai co-founder punya background. Yang pertama, yang kedua, yang kedua kenapa Azira nak buat this idea? Ada personal punya experience ke atau macam mana? Uh, tak uh, okey, macam ni. <laughs> Jujur saya cakaplah saya baru je uh, join program ni semalam. Jadi ini adalah uh, instant idea yang saya dapat. Uh, sebab daripada pengalaman saya sendiri dan untuk makluman memang uh, rakan-rakan saya ramai lagi tidak dapat so setiap kali temu duga memang hanya 10% sahaja so itulah uh, puncanya saya dapat uh, idea dan juga uh, persoalan kaji selidik itu adalah berdasarkan pengalaman-pengalaman uh, yang tahun inilah uh, tahun ini tahun lalu okey so co-founder saya okay, saya tidak nyatakan dekat sini tapi uh, saya punya uh, planning lah uh, kita ada satu sebenarnya graduan pendidikan ni, kita dah ada satu uh, kita kata kita satu um, apa tu? Uh, alumni alumni uh, graduan pendidikan universiti awam. So dekat alumni ni mereka memang sangat supportive dan mereka memang uh, memang nak bantu graduan-graduan yang masih belum uh, berjaya menjadi seorang guru. So dekat situ uh, kita akan collaborate dengan mereka lah dan saya nak uh, jadikan mereka Uh, sat, salah satulah platform untuk kolaborasi selain dengan pihak uh, universiti. So itu lebih kepada uh, collaboration partner lah bukan co-founder eh? Ya. Yeah. Uh, co-founder okay. saya tak ada. 
Okay, so, kalau tak ada Kita proceed, okay Sekejap, saya tak ada soalan Boleh, boleh Saya okay. tak ada soalan Tapi saya nak beri pen, uh, opinion Because I also uh, had an experience uh, Going for interview Untuk jadi cikgu And I had no idea How the interview would uh, Look like sebenarnya Because it's not the same as other Interviews untuk uh, other jawatan because I normally go for swasta company, can so uh, I think I just want to say that this is a good small initiative that she is uh, currently planning to. That's all. Uh, good. Um, all the best, Hazira, with your thank with you your idea. Mm-hmm. Satu lagi bila interview cikgu ni dia ada ada satu segmen dia suruh mengajar kan kat panel betul ya yeah, ada sikit hmm. dalam 5 okay. minit ha apa mock mock teaching dia panggil kan mock teaching ya yeah, betul hmm. alright thank you thank you azira thank you juga emma bagi pandangan tunggu inspirasi ya terinspirasi dengan pandangan emma <laughs> afternoon ladies and gentlemen raise your hand if you can swim confidently what would you do if you fell into the sea Okay, so Super Swim Academy presents to you a solution to shape swim confidence in you. After a thorough research done, we discovered that one out of three children in Labuan do not know how to swim. Even worse, there are very few certified swimming instructors and coaches as well as systematic swimming academy in Labuan. So here we are. Super Swim Academy provides every club love one people with comprehensive swimming packages for you to gain swimming confidence by our known experienced swimming coach in a joyful and safe environment. Super Swim Academy targets students and adults aged from 4 to 50 years old, mainly in Labuan. Based on the data, there are about 100 people live in Labuan and with 10% of this population coming from the survey that we have done, we have a total of 10,000 potential customers in learning to swim. What is special about Super Swim Academy is that we have variety of swim packages offered. We have known experience as certified swimming coach and also excellent swimmers track records in various competition. We offer one-on-one swimming lessons um, and also group lessons as established here. When you have completed basic swimming class, you can subscribe to be our swim training community and continue to swim actively as a swimmer. Super Swim also offers seasonal packages, which include baby swimming class, water fitness program, and competition. So here is our track records. This is the most excellent track records to feast your eyes. Super Swim Academy swimmers have competed locally and regionally and succeeded in grabbing medals in and this way, we look forward to bring this internationally. So, here is how you can easily book your slot with Super Swim Academy. First, check out Super Swim official website and explore more on every packages offered and book a slot and ready to be the super swimmer. We aim to increase Super Swim Academy brand awareness of 50% of Labo community in the first year of establishment. We will grow the enrollment rate with 10% annually and targeting to accelerate the collaboration with local authorities, businesses, and schools for customer swimming programs every year. Super Swim Academy is led by the founder, Coach Clement David, and managed by me, Kim Lee Choi, as the managing director. Super Swim would like to invite you to follow us on our Facebook and Instagram account. And if you have more inquiries, don't hesitate to contact me here. You can scan the QR code and here are more information you can explore about the Super Swim Academy through this website. With that, I thank you. Well, uh, finish at 2 minutes and 50 seconds. So, uh, our Q&A session. All right, thank you, Bong. Uh, my question to you, Kim Lee. Uh, I know that you have shared with us your value proposition, but can you explain further in what makes your value proposition unique and specific to you that shows that you are different from a normal or a typical service provider or a trainer in terms of providing swimming lessons? 
Okay, first of all, our coach uh, is certified coach. It's not a layman person like you know how to swim, then you can teach people. We have the life saving certificate. We ensure the kids and also learners safety in the swimming pool. Then, and other than that, uh, our coach has experience in training competitive swimmers in athlete forms. So from basic learn to swim until you become a competitive swimmer, we provide a whole uh, whole comprehensive service, not just stop there and then not moving on. So this is our right. advantage. How's your model structure in terms of implementing your business idea? Model structure. Um, this is our revenue model. Is in no, no, I'm sorry. I think uh, let me clarify. It's not. I didn't mean the revenue model. Uh -huh. What I meant, what I meant to ask is that uh, how are you going to implement your business idea? Uh, do you just uh, are you going to speak to uh, swimming pool operators uh, throughout Labuan? Are you going to attach to condominiums and hotels that have swimming pools? Yes, actually we have one uh, swimming pool that is uh, taken over and managed by us. So this is a brand new swimming pool which is in charge by Super Swim Academy. Of course, this is a renting from the authorities who own the uh, properties. So we are solely in charge of the swimming parts, the swimming pool uh, part. So the authority is what? Is it a local government authority, a university, a private? Yeah. It is a local authorities. Oh, so it's, it's a sport complex, is it? Uh, no, not sport complex. Our sport complex don't have swimming pool. And uh, this is actually a former, former school, former college. When their operations is ceased, then they wanted to source it out for people to operate that place. Okay, thank you, Kim Lee. Uh, I'll open the floor to other judges as well. Thank you. Kim Lee, if I may. Um, it, it seems like um, it's, it's very, uh, I would say, corporate and commercial. This particular um, thing that you are bringing to the table. Now, what is the community development flair that you have here? So, because somehow it's, it's, it's you know about um, developing the uh, community. Yes. So, what's the flair that you could um, at least unveil to us in a way? Sorry, I don't get your question. Community. Community development. A community development. Uh, currently, we have a pool of parents who are, uh, you know, actively sending the kids to swim, and also there are pools of a brand new parents. They plan, they are intended to send their kids to swim to learn to swim. However, it's like not many uh, coaches available, right? So, uh, after I have established the survey, it's like whether they are interested to send their kids to swim, I immediately received the inquiries uh, from uh, these interested parents. So the pools are actually, communities are based on the, you know, kindergartens, the Tasca, Tadika, and even the primary school parents. So in here, we have about 17 schools, 11 from primary and uh, nine from the secondary schools. And these are our target or primary uh, community for Learn to Swim. And of course, after this, we will soon develop them for, um, you know, a more, uh, more training, the serious training. So this is uh, our primary uh, target and plan. And how do we reach to them? Basically, it is, global community is small, so we do by word, word of mouth, like recommendations so when we ask them how do you find coaches to learn to learn swimming they say by friend recommendation by friend uh, other than that then social media so most of the time when you have a good reputation uh, they will recommend coach them coach clement is a, a, a good 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 coach yeah so this is how we uh, develop the community and of course all we have we run meets competitions sometimes we have like a family gathering a family uh, so what sort of like water pool day to have a bonding together with swimmers and parents? We have question from the chat box. Uh, are there package to teach mom and children swim at the same time from Priscilla? Can you repeat your question? I'm not so uh, this sure. Question from the chat box, right? Uh, are there package to teach mom and children swim at the same time? Oh, um. It is to ensure the proper attention to the kids. We usually focus on the kids by group or one-to-one. -one. And there are also a smaller groups. We call it like babies, 
mom and baby's uh, program, swimming program, where these smaller groups, the mom can carry the younger toddler. That we teach the mom how to how to handle the kids in the swimming pool. That one we call it a baby swim program. So any uh, children below three or below four years old, we encourage them to join them, but not teach them separately to baby and to mother. It's together. All right. I have one question. Uh, are there any like um, you know, like, um type of swimmers like river swimmer or sea swimmer because you know swimming in the river is quite different than swimming in the sea yes right so is there any like uh your package that you specialize in a river swimmer like me like i orang kampung so i will i used to swim in the river right so uh-huh. when you swim in the river is very different when you go yeah, you jump into yeah, the sea. Yeah. so is there any like you know specialty when you go into your package and oh i teach you how to be a uh-huh. river swimmer <laughs> Okay, I got your man. This is why swimming in the wild, swimming in the river and the ocean. Well, uh, we don't have like special programs for that. But as long as you master uh, learning uh, the, the swimming techniques in the swimming pool, you we you are you are um, you have to gain the confidence first. So we uh, don't have the program uh, to be honest. But we because we we promote to safe to swim in a safe environment. So there are some um, how do I say obstacles and some unfor the unforeseen uh, you know the, the 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 dangers we don't know. This one we don't encourage them, but then uh, we just have to ensure that they can swim in the uh, in a proper uh, or how to say in a safe uh, facilities. Um, yeah, but then in Labuan there are sea challenge here which swimmers swim across from island to island and the wind, all these are the factors that increase the resistance of swimming. And then still most of our swimmers, they excel because they have done through a lot of, uh, you know, these uh, kind of trainings and um, practices. So, so come join Super Swim Academy. I can guarantee you can swim confidently even in the river or the, or the sea. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Okay, very great idea. Okay. So it's, it's really interesting when you, you said that in Labuan they have a swimming or right, obstacle swim from pool up from island to island. Oh, it's very interesting. I never heard about it. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is held Labuan. every year, so but because of this COVID, yeah, so it just like turned down. It is opening up soon. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kim Lee, for your presentation. So can we move on to our next presenter, Natasha? Sure. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, Natasha, you may start your presentation in three right, minutes. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Sure, thank you. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is very well. Now, my name is Natasha, and I'm from STEM8 Sarawak, a platform for the Center for All STEM and ICT programs in Sarawak. Our team foresee that there is a need to have center for all on these matters because we see that first, there is a scattered source of information on EduTech Startup in Sarawak. And second, we have a limitation for the EduTech Startup to share their initiative and what programs they are offering for the Sarawakians. And third, there is no set of information to access for all STEM and ICT programs for Sarawak, especially for the students and teachers if they are interested to join any competition or events. So this is the solution that we actually offered via the STEM It Sarawak, a platform for all the center or for the STEM and ICT programs. So first, it will be an easy access for search, uh, for, to search for the EduTech Startup in Sarawak. And it will be easier for the EduTech Startup as well to promote their programs and initiative. And for the students, teachers, and uh, schools, this will be a center of resources for the students and uh, for them to find the info on the STEM and ICT programs in Sarawak. So this is the mock-up of the platform in our website and users can actually easily over, hover to what they need. So as you can see here, if you have a look at the website, so this is still in the testing phase. We are not publishing it yet. So the users can actually hover to what are our mission, what are the upcoming events or program by the EduTech Startup and for the EduTech Startup to be our STEM delivery partners as well so that they can promote what are their programs and what are their initiatives over here. So we actually focus on the SDG number four, the quality education. 
The beneficiary for this platform is, of course, we have EduTech Startup and also the students, teachers, and schools. From the survey that we collected from the 50 potential users, most of them actually agreed that this platform can ease uh, their process on the resources of information for STEM and ICT program in Sarawak. We have also identified partners that could be a part of the platform that we can actually share to the users in Sarawak. The revenue model is not streamlined yet. As for initial phase, we would like to gather all information at first for the benefit of the users. But we can foresee that the revenue model from the platform are first coming for the profit sharing of the programs conducted by the EduTech Startup and also coming from the intellect, uh, innovation intellectual property uh, from the winners of any competitions uh, by the students. So what I mean by the IP here is actually if the prototype of the students is actually a very good one. So we will use it uh, and we will help them to market the product. So that's it from STEM Sarawak. If you have any more information that you would like to from us, please uh, do not be hesitant to contact us. Yes. Thank you. Right, so you guys hear my voice clearly? Hello? Yeah. Yes. Clear? Yeah. Clear. All right, so stop at two minutes and 40 seconds so questions from the judge all right uh thank you uh natasha for that wonderful pitch uh would you care to explain in terms of uh your business model how are you planning to make money from your business idea Currently, uh, dear judges, I don't have any revenue model that are very clear because this is just an initial phase. Our focus currently right now is just to collect all of the information, then only we will plan how we can actually make money from that. Because I think the most uh, important thing that we want to do right now is for us to actually reach out to all edutech startup and also contacting the schools on what are their needs uh, in terms of the STEM and ICT program. Then only we can actually uh, plan out what can we uh, charge uh, the user later on. So no plans at all other than charging the user? Correct. So uh, currently we don't have any uh, revenue or any uh, planning on that part yet. Okay. So mm. thank you. Uh, what about the other judges? I open the floor. Uh, Natasha, I lost you on your value proposition. Can you show it again? You mean for the beneficiary? Yeah. Yeah, so this platform is actually catered. Uh, we have two categories here. First is for the EduTech startup. And if you are actually uh, talking to them, they actually find it's very hard to promote what are the programs that they offered and also how they can actually uh, be the center or actually how they can share what are the initiatives that they can actually do for the Sarawakians. So with this platform, we can actually gather all of them in one place. So people, uh, let's say if Ministry of Science and Technology from Sarawak, they are looking for uh, STEM delivery partners to conduct a program for them, they can easily go to this platform and search for the potential uh, edutech startup uh, that can actually run the program for them and from the perspective of students teachers and schools um, if you realize right now there are a lot of competitions going on but sometimes they miss out so for example if they, uh, they heard about this uh, junior innovate competition but the registration has already closed and they are not uh, sempat nak join the competition. So with this platform, actually, they can easily access what are the offered programs, competition uh, that they can join. So schools or the teachers can actually navigate, uh, help the students to register using this platform only. So that is the uh, objective of this platform to make it easier for both EduTech Startup and also student teachers and schools to have an access on all information for uh, in STEM and ICT program. Cool, cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the question. Any other question from the other judges that you would like to know more about this uh, platform? None from me. Uh, maybe from the other judges, one more. We can abide, give some time. All right, so I think that's it. Thank you very much. So, so thank you, <coughs> Natasha, for your great presentation. Uh, I'd like to call Susila for the next presenter. Hello. Hi, Hi. 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 Hi.
I will start sharing my screens. All right. So you have three minutes when you begin your pitch. Sabah known as the poorest state and also the highest unemployment rate in the whole country. Hi, my name is Priscilla and I'm the founder of this. Imagine there's 300,000 of jobless youth we are expecting in Sabah and the government views this seriously and they have pushed a lot of entrepreneurial related initiatives and urged those who are unable to get a job to be at least be encouraged to start a small business. However, due to the lack of industry exposures, inefficient learning, lack of structures on how to start the small businesses, 90% of the small businesses initiated by the young people fell in the first three years. This is where we step in. We create an online platform to connect the Sabahan jobless youth with industry experts where we provide exclusive programs, professional instructors, and supportive online learning environment to support and help the youngsters, the jobless youth, to start a new business in Sabah. So our process is very easy. Sign up an account in our website, join the program, and be self-employed ready. So this is how it works. After you create an account, you'll be led to our main page. This is where you can decide if you want to be the problem solver or the problem contributor. The top performers will then be awarded with um, deals and also local programs from our partners. And for those who wanted to link and learn more with the local entrepreneurs, you can join our program. And this is where we link them together. And after they have completed the program, they will receive a certificate from the companies. So what makes this platform special and unique is the hyperlocal platform, which all the assistance and services are catered to local Saban contact. And of course, the easy, easy uh, user-friendly navigated uh, simple UIUX design. And also most importantly, we provide better access to industry experts for the jobless youth in Sabah. So currently, we are only targeting students between 13 to 17 years old, jobless SPM school leavers between 18 to 21 years old, and those who are currently in Sabah. As the market size in Sabah is huge, 400, it is about 420,000 to 850,000 youth in uh, Sabah. And because Sabah has the highest unemployment rate, we will be only focusing in Sabah market. According to the feedback from our 14 users uh, who have tried the platform, 85.8% of them think that our overall quality program is above average, and 85.7% of them think that the programs are useful for them, and 64.3% are willing to pay 75 ringgit to attend the program. So these are the team of us. Uh, there are three of us who are very passionate in helping the teenagers and especially the jobless youth in Sabah. And uh, me, myself, already have 10 years of uh, education background. And Ken is a, a professional accountant based in Singapore. And Alex is a special, uh, special market, marketing specialist in Sabah. And for those who are interested to help our jobless youth in Sabah to be self-employed ready, feel free to contact us here. That's all for me. Thank you. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you for the pitch. Love the energy as usual. Uh, can you explain with us uh, more in terms of your revenue model? All right. So for the revenue model, we are going to a premium. Uh, we are going for a premium uh, business model, which is uh, for the premium uh, for the free users. They can access to our main page here, where they can uh, post their problems and also become the problem solver. And they also can receive awards from our partners. And also the other one is uh, uh, premium members which they pay a certain amount, uh, then we will let them to access to all our features in the platform, which is connect with the local entrepreneurs uh, and then participate in the competitions and also uh, solve some of the cash award, uh, cash challenges posted by our partners. All right. Uh, yeah. In terms of collaborations, are you considering collaborations with established corporations or big companies? Okay, the current collaborations that we have is uh, the Commentarium Belia Sultan and Sabah, 
uh, and also Sabah Creative Economy Innovation Center. They are uh, two of the organizations in Sabah that are supporting us. And also we have a few local businesses that are supporting us like More Fun, the uh, Sabahan uh, Lifestyle app, and also Agritech uh, Company, Gondasan Aqua Farm, and also the uh, Design Studio in Sabah, uh, which focuses on design and logo and uh, some related uh, uh, industry. Yeah. All right. Other than having a very specific niche customer segment, do you have a specific niche in terms of the businesses that you're going to approach? Um, the businesses that we are approach are mostly we are focusing on young entrepreneurs. Uh, the, the reason why we want we only want to approach the young entrepreneurs because we wanted the gap between the students and the entrepreneurs to be cl uh, closer. So that it is easier for uh, the entrepreneurs to uh, send out their messages to the uh, younger generations. That is All why right. uh, we are fo yeah, focusing on them. All right. Thank you, Priscilla. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, I open the floor to the other judges. Um, hello, Priscilla. Rain here. Hi, Hi Rain. Um, hello, how are you? Uh, do um, you mind going back to that page? Um, survey in the, the validation page. Okay. All right. So, um, I think it's before this you mentioned the oh uh, yeah this one. So I'm just wondering, did, did you distribute this among your target market? That is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, your target market is the unemployed youth, right? Is, is your audience for this survey is among the unemployed youth? Her, this survey is actually our target market is students between 13 to 17 and also jobless youth between 18 to 21 years old. And this one is a combination of the jobless youth and also the, the students. Their age are between 16 years old to 23 years old. Uh, okay, because I'm I'm quite uh, taken aback that there's like majority of them were willing to pay quite a high number of price. So the program um again how how, how long is the program until the beginning? Uh, what's the timeline for you to okay. complete the the courses for you to get the cert? Yeah. Okay, so this is actually not a a, a, a courses. This is for the users who wanted to when they. Uh, went into our website, uh, our platform, they can choose uh, if they wanted to join the program. So let's say uh, each of the program is only one month because we expose the students to different industry in each month. So uh, once they pay 75 ringgit, it is a one month program. So after they complete the program, then they can decide if they want to continue the program with other industries. So this is how it works. Uh, all right, I got it. Okay, thank I hope you answer your questions. All right. Thanks, Priscilla. Thanks, Rain. Do you have any other inquiries from the other panel? Priscilla, if I may, um, we have seen huge failure in this particular job placement effort, uh, especially coming from like Eco Jaya government uh, effort. So what do you think that you could be successful this time around? Because it is a sentiment now there that this market is really hard to crack. Even the government um, with huge funding still fail. So what do you think you could be successful? Okay, um, the reason uh, our main objective here is to expose the students to all the different industry uh, out there. So it is not in specific to only solve the problem for the jobless youth. So if let's, because our target market is 13 to 17 years old, this is where we want an early exposures to various industry to the students so that in case if once they graduated, they are unable to get a job. At least they already have the skills and mindset that they can start a small businesses in Sabah. Because in Sabah, the government is pushing uh, entrepreneurial related initiative. They give them a lot of grant. But the problem is they do not have, they are not ready yet to start a small, small businesses. That's why a lot of small businesses by the young people fail. So what we wanted to do is start them from young, 13 to 17 years old prepare them for the entrepreneurship journey, let them to explore and expand their network with our local entrepreneurs. And for the jobless youth, if they are unable, uh, before they, uh, for the jobless youth, because they already graduated. So what they can benefit from our platform is that they can earn the 
uh, experiences, uh, then this platform can serve as a link in for the jobless youth, where when they are looking for job in the future, they at least can show the future entrepreneurs that they, okay, I have uh, uh, these kinds of experiences with this different industry. Uh, so I think uh, it can increase their job. Uh, I mean, they can be uh, successful in taking those jobs in the future. That is our main objective. Thanks, Priscilla. The reason I'm asking, because I think this is important to be successful. The reason being, because it has direct impact to people who go into uh, your program, direct impact to their financial, right? So highly likely you could be acquired by a bigger player like um, Job Street. So mm -hmm. perhaps you want to target for that as well. And let's make this successful. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that comment. Uh, do we have any other opinions or questions for Priscilla? All right, I think we can proceed. Thank you, Priscilla, for your time. Um, calling our next presenter is Joey Go. Are you there? Hello? Yeah. Cannot hear you. Hi. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, it's a bit soft. Test, test, test. test. Testing mic one, two, three. It's okay, Bong. Don't give up. Shall I start now? Yeah, you can start uh, your pitching in three minutes from now. All right. Hi, this is Joey from Hijau, the one-stop subscription plan for fresh beans for your busy lifestyle. I am the solo writer of this program. I graduated from Help University with the bachelor degree in psychology. And since then, I've been involved in community building in Labuan. And I saw an aspiration to upskill the B40 communities in Labuan through hydroponic farming. This is because the B40 community in Labuan is very unskilled and heavily dependent on handouts, and there's a lack of community effort to upskill them that would provide long-term financial empowerment. On the other side, Labuan is also very heavily dependent on imports when it comes to fresh vegetables, and we have actually done user validation, which um, validated the demand for cheaper and fresher vegetables in Labuan. Uh, so the solution Hijau proposed is the initial stage of 18 months, we will train up 20 hydroponic farmers, which would eventually be deployed to the very uh, low income areas where they would upskill more of the community members there. And after we have matured, we will aim to build an ecosystem of hydroponic farms across Labuan. And after, during the maturing stage, we will also expand to the subscription plan for the vegetable subscription, where the customer would choose a recurring plan and adopt a farmer per se and have their, uh, have their vegetable delivered to them weekly or bi-weekly. And from the community perspective, uh, we aim to upskill the B40 community members as mentioned, and they would each manage one vertical hydroponic plant, which would generate around 20 ringgit extra income per month. And their produce would be packaged with personalized messages for more customer engagement. And customer segment, we're looking at tech-savvy adult uh, in Labuan who are looking for um, better alternative and convenient alternatives to their grocery shopping experience. And community segment, we're looking to empower the B40 community of Labuan, B40 communities all around five subzones of Labuan. Revenue model, we're looking, because it's at the initial ideation stage, we're looking at like a 80, 80-20%, which 80% will go to the farmer and 20% will go to Hijau to cover up the equipment and oper operational costs. And through this revenue model, we get to build a sustainable ecosystem for the environment and also the local economy and also directly increase the income capacity of the B40 communities in Labuan. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. Any more information, you can visit our link tree linked here. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Joey. That was a wonderful pitch. Uh, can we hear again regarding your, uh, your idea in terms of how do you make this sustainable for you and your investors? Okay, so we need to talk about the revenue model. Right. 
Uh, can you explain? I understand that it's your your skimming off the top. Is that it, or can you explain a little bit further about this? It's because it's at the ideation stage. We haven't had uh enough sufficient data to support how we're gonna generate our revenue. But um, research shown that 80 20 percent is a good gauge for like a community project like this. So because our main aim is to empower the community so 80% will go to them and 20% will go to to cover up the equipment costs and also the right. operational the, costs and the reason mm -hmm. the reason i'm asking this is uh regarding the annotation down there but you say that the 20% is over equipment and operational costs yeah. uh, does that mean are you going to sell them the equipment are you going to provide maintenance are you going to supervise how they conduct the farming the the upper the vertical farming yeah, I think all goes to how the entire operation of the project. Yeah. So how, how do you have that in mind? For example, we're speaking about micro farmers, right? Micro vertical farmers. Yeah. Uh, let's say for you to reach uh, some scale of economies, you need to at least what have 50 micro farmers and those 50 micro farmers do not necessarily stay in the same place. Uh, are you going to tackle or approach in terms of monitoring costs, uh, maintenance costs, and uh, the sheer cost of to and fro between the vertical farms and your, how should I say, your collection facility maybe? Uh, how do you have how do you have that in mind? Okay, how do you so see that I have mind? actually contacted uh, one of the social enterprise here in Labuan, and they are willing to provide us a space for us to run the pilot project, which is the initial 18 months so from there they will contribute to the initial funding for the training and then from there we will try to expand it with the with the skilled farmers into all the different areas all right okay thank you uh, i open the floor to the other judges if you have any questions or opinions you want to add hi joy Hi. Uh, do you have any, um, like, why do you do this? Or do you have, like, unfair advantage on top of there's so many things that you can do? Uh, I'm doing this because I see there's a demand for fresh vegetables and uh, cheaper alternatives. Because right now, Laban is very dependent on imports from Sabah. And I actually mirrored this, uh, mirrored this project from... Pasa Kita, which is a very similar um, online platform for subscription-based groceries in Sabah. And I see how they are very successful in doing that. And on top of that, I also want to create like an ecosystem of like upskilling the local communities. So to provide them with a long-term financial skill, so to say. And currently, there's no no one doing such thing in Labuan. Hydroponic is very um, very not talked about in Labuan. So yeah. Okay. Hi, Joy. Hi. Okay. Uh, how about the delivery process? Is it a daily, weekly, or monthly? We're looking at. Uh, it depends on our. The, the data that we were going to collect from the first initial 18 months of training with our pilot cohort because we don't know the how long the plan is going to come out like you know the the actual process of it but we're looking at a recurring plan so maybe after we have gathered our data it would be they could choose a plan that could deliver like bi-weekly or monthly it's 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 customizable in my mind is it in house uh, in house delivery or yeah rider? in house yeah. delivery and the logistic part we haven't really thought about it but we could always partner up with um like food panda or like more fun which is the delivery company in labuan mm, okay all right thank you also um an agency that you might want to work together with is Peladang because they have been trying to do yeah. this for many years but it never been successful so something you might want to look into thank you all right so that's it thank you so much uh joey thank you so much for the wonderful yeah. pitch
So, thank you. Thank you. Dengar. Dengar, dengar. Ke Jawa. Ke Jawa. Ke Jawa. Ke Jawa. Tak ada. Clear. Clear. Okay. Thank you, uh, Joey, for the great presentation. So, I'm calling our next presenter. Uh, Bat Salah, are you there? From Mums Village. Yes, I'm here. All right, Bat Salah, you can prepare your slides okay. and share screen. Is Bat Salah speaking? Because I'm not hearing anything. Dengar share screen. Problem lagi. Eh? All right. Okay, Bat Salah, you may begin your pitch now. All right. Hi, uh, my name is Patsula. Um, I'm the CEO of Mums Village Venture. Uh, it is said that one in three women are being abused right now. With the pandemic, uh, domestic violence has increased uh, 10 times um, worldwide. And not only that, if women are keep being abused, uh, when do they have time to learn? And so this is me, Patsala, uh, and this is my amazing team who helps, um, we help women to be financially independent through um, entrepreneurial programs, capacity building, uh, and digital marketing, and community building. And um, I used to wake up, uh, you know, four years ago, I used to wake up to stories by women who were uh, you know, sharing their stories. And um, a lot of them say similar things and the advice is given to them, they will come back. And when I saw a pattern in them that there were root causes that we were not solving. And these were some of the findings that I've seen. Um, and of course, pandemic didn't uh, make it good either for them. So based on our user journey, our beneficiary journey for victims or disempowered women, um, in these five years, we have realized that um, you know, utilizing, uh, responding uh, to their current needs, um, providing them resources uh, such as first line crisis support, um, and, and giving, the, uh, upskilling them uh, through capacity building, and um, based on what is their what their passion and their interest is about, uh, will eventually make them, um, you know, rebuild their lives, and of course, with their community support, uh, eventually a survivor become an advocate as well. Um, and with that in mind, uh, we are currently creating an e-learning platform and a training marketplace uh, called Geek Learners, uh, which will provide convenient, self-paced, affordable, bite-sized learning program for um, our, uh, our, our clients. And definitely, it will also include uh, self-healing modules, uh, and we will also have uh, the Bachelor Intervention module, uh, which is first of its kind in Malaysia. Uh, as a uh, learning module part of e-learners. And um, this is our unique selling proposition. Um, it's uh, due to our advocacy and um, providing the free uh, learning, I'm so sorry of my kids back um, advocacy for our beneficiaries and uh, integrated learning programs um, to the support of our digital community, which is called Open Power Network. Right now we have about 11,100 members, um, convenience and self-based. Um, this is our business model whereby the traders uh, and the small business owners will be paying per purchase or monthly subscription, which cost subsidizes the classes for our beneficiaries and also to sustain the uh, platform and so on. Our revenue stream, our revenue stream is sales in training um, and as well as uh, subscription. We also have a merchandise which uh, focuses on eco-friendly gifting for people, planet, and celebrations. This is our go-to-market strategies, uh, which are already being deployed right now uh, to our digital platforms and social media handles, which I'll be sharing with you on. And um, the market that we are looking at is, of course, um, capacity building for women, which uh, and this is the numbers that we're looking at in five years. And uh, because we have a multi-sided um, business model, we are also looking at the uh, total HRDF support trainers providers in our country. Um, and that's our attraction, uh, our, our goal for the next five years. And this is the execution plan um, from the pre-launch to validation right now, post any um, metric of the system building building program. Uh, we are looking at uploading our batches and validating so that we can uh, do uh, a troubleshooting if needed and then beta run um, and prepare to launch later our competitor analysis. 
and um, this is our fund utilization um, strategies currently. And uh, based on what I have done for this past um, uh, one year, especially, um, our cumulative revenue for our e bazaar alone is 118,000. Uh, for social media, uh, we have increased our participants. Uh, visibility by 5,000%, our highest track record being 174,000 in just two weeks. And these are where you can find us. Thank you. All right, thank you, Vesela. Uh, okay. So you actually you have passed three minutes, but it's okay. It's just oh, a so session. So you may. How, how minutes was that? Yeah? It was uh, four minutes and 15 seconds. So, yeah. You should uh, practice some more to keep your pitching below three minutes, right? right. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Vasala, for that wonderful pitch. I love the uh, social direction that where you are going. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the extent of your recruitment or community building with regarding your uh, beneficiaries? Uh, how many people are currently accessible to you? because I understand that they are providing the services, right? Am I understanding this correctly? Um, yes, currently, how are they getting connected to me is through my social media platforms. Uh, myself, uh, as a key point, definitely, uh, as an activist against gender-based violence. And not only that, we also have uh, a community group of about 10, uh, 11,000 members. We have two other pages, uh, accumulatively all together, we have about 80,000 uh, followers who are able to reach out to us. However, uh, the victims are very discreet about their identity and they are, um, some of them are following and, uh, you know, um, and, and, and learning without even getting connected through uh, my posts and uh, my write-ups on the social media pages. All right. I think my question is uh, mainly, mainly revolves around your ability to meet demand once demand has peaked. So for example, uh, these are troubled individuals, black for a better word, right? Can they really meet the uh, demand of your customers? For example, if your customers were to need a demand of a total of uh, 1,000 units per day, uh, would your, how should I say, beneficiary base be able to meet that demand? Can you supply to that demand? Um, because we are creating an e-learning platform, the only thing that we're looking at is the um, the back end size uh, that would need I'm to sorry, increase. E I'm sorry, e-learning platform. I thought uh, the beneficiaries were providing a service. Did I understand uh, that cor uh, correctly? No, it's a training marketplace whereby the beneficiaries are able to go and learn there for free. Okay, and then what? What can you uh, show the the business model slide? Maybe explain more on that one. Uh, Yes, that's the one. So, which one? Uh, who pays here? Yeah? Okay, the economic buyer here is the trainers uh, who will be uh, purchasing a monthly subscription to park their modules on our platform, um, as well as small business owners who would like to upskill themselves or uh, increase their capacity uh, to learn about entrepreneurship and digital marketing or even any crafting skills. And this ultimately uh, cost subsidizes classes. If let's say there's a uh, GV victim who would say specifically wants to learn, um, I only want to learn about catering and we are able to okay. provide them for uh, free classes. Uh, instead of nowadays, we have so many classes, but it's not, um, it's not what uh, someone would want. Uh, it's just because we are having the funds, we are just giving it out to them. Is it something they really need or something they're passionate about? We are not doing uh, okay. needs analysis on that. Okay, so my follow-up question would be, how would the trainers uh, be the one paying to park their modules on the platform, yeah? Um, yeah, it's by, a, if they have two options, either they pay by monthly subscription or they can pay by uh, profit sharing, which so is... I'm sorry, trainers also pay to put in their, their modules there? Uh, yes, trainers also pay. Uh, trainers also will pay uh, for putting in their modules there. Um, and if, uh, or they can also opt for, if they're going to be sharing, profit sharing 20% with them doing their own uh, marketing and advertising, or 35% uh, uh, for the company if uh, we are uh, assisting them with their uh, advertising and marketing and all of these platforms. All right. Thank you so much, Vasala. Uh, that's it from me. It was a wonderful pitch. I open the floor to the other panels as well. Thank you.
All right, so let's begin. Right, so your three minutes begin now. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh dan selamat petang. Saya Andy Sani akan menerangkan Mass Stop Center MSC. Problem statement. Kadar pengangguran di Sabah masih tinggi berdasarkan keratan akbar sinar harian pada 19 Ogos 2019 di Kota Kinabalu terdapat lebih kurang 112,000 orang penganggur. Solution. MSC is physical platform for you to work and upskill entrepreneur knowledge. Maka MSC adalah satu platform fizikal untuk remaja bekerja dan meningkatkan kemahiran keusahawanan. Bagaimana ia bekerja? Pertama, MSC akan menjadi satu ekosistem kepada usahawan, menyediakan beberapa platform perniagaan. Yang kedua, MSC menyediakan ruang untuk berniaga. Dan yang ketiga, MSC akan jadi pusat latihan kepada program dan peningkatan kemahiran. Value Proposition yang pertama, hyperlocal, helping local by local. Yang kedua, yacht entrepreneurial friendly, mesra usahawan dan mesra remaja. Yang ketiga, center and hub for everyone with technology driven. Menjadi pusat kepada semua komuniti setempat berdasarkan teknologi sedia ada seperti dunia IT. Validation, dasarkan kaji selidik, 91% responden berminat dengan perniagaan mat dan 85% berminat dengan kafe yang menjadi community center dan 54% hingga 5% mencadangkan penjualan makanan. Ini menyebabkan MSC uh, ditubuhkan sebagai mass stop center dengan terdiri daripada tiga bahagian iaitu minimat, Simple Cafe dan Community Center MSC. Thank you. Itu saja dari saya, Andy Sani Abdul Kadir. Baik, terima kasih Andy. Uh, soalan saya, uh, apa rancangan Andy untuk perkembangan bisnes idea ini? Mana dalam masa lima tahun, macam mana bisnes idea ini boleh berkembang dan meningkatkan lagi uh, revenue ataupun income? kepada bisnes. Sekarang untuk dalam masa tahun ini saat dalam masa satu tahun lebih kepada penubuhan koperasi untuk melaksanakan MSC maka daripada koperasi akan menjalankan perniagaan daripada perniagaan ini akan lahirkan usahawan-usahawan maka dalam masa lima tahun akan datang perkembangannya adalah dalam membentuk koperasi adanya center fizikal uh, kemudian adanya ejen-ejen usahawan okay. itu uh, maknanya MSC ini tidak terhad kepada apa-apa produk lah, ya? Ah, ya, produk memang tiada lah. tidak terhad bergantung kepada uh, pekerja dan juga usahawan yang terlibat maknanya pendapatan MSC itu sendiri dihasil daripada Pendapatan daripada perniagaan. Maknanya untuk setiap perniagaan dikenakan kos ke atau untuk kemasukan setiap orang yang ingin berniaga di MSC ke, ke macam mana? Okey, perniagaan yang dirancang sekarang dalam bentuk koperasi. Setiap hmm. ahli akan keluarkan modal sebanyak RM250, iaitu RM50 untuk penyertaan. Kemudian RM200 sebagai saham. Kemudian akan mula berniaga dalam bentuk restoran. Kemudian dari restoran akan dikembangkan kepada kedai runcit dan community center. Okey, terima kasih Andy. Uh, Akim yang lain kalau ada soalan atau ada komen. Andy, apa uniknya My Stop Andy ni dengan dengan yang lain-lain? Pastinya dah ada idea ni before kan? Even dah execute pun. So apa yang Andy nampak uh, kekuatan My Stop Center Andy ni? Yang kita dapat lihat nanti bila mana adanya uh, 
apa ni center hub center untuk usahawan iaitu kita akan jual sarapan saja di kafe selepas sarapan kita akan adakan kelas tuition kelas komputer dan juga kelas keusahawanan di premis tersebut dia lebih kepada community center berbanding kedai makan okey faham Dekat ke mana itu India? Ada dah ada premis ke? Premis uh, sudah ada tapi belum belum ada perjanjian penyewaan. Tapi Premis kat mana tu ya? Di Taman Bukit Setia, Sepanggar, Sabah. Betul maksud saya tu di bangunan bangunan, uh, bangunan pejabat ke atau di rumah kedai ke? Bangunan kan? rumah kedai. Oh, faham. Okey. Ada apa soalan lain ke daripada hakim lain? Alright, terima kasih Andy, terima kasih banyak-banyak atas -banyak. speech sebentar tadi. Abang, kita boleh teruskan lagi? So, saya yeah. stop sharing scare. Terima yeah. kasih Andy. Okay. Terima Thank kasih you. Andy. Alright, so kita dah sampai di penghujung, which is ada satu je lagi kita punya presenter. Tak, tak right. present. Um, calling Nurul. Izati, are you here? Tak ada. Izati dah hilang. <laughs> Sekejap eh. Uh, Nurul Izzati cakap dia ada isu dengan laptop dia Okay tak apa So in the meantime Macam mana? Proceed saja ke? Sure. Kita I mean uh, dah tak ada dah presenter Alright. Sebab Izzati last uh, and then Emilia tadi baru text dia cakap dia pun tak boleh uh, proceed Dengan pitching hari ni Okay So Puan Ashraf buat ini I mean We can just give a uh, like a uh, feedback lah pasal I mean okay. from the whole pitching. Thank you. Right. Uh, so kalau uh, terima kasih semua atas uh, penyebatan anda untuk hari ini. Uh, seperti mana yang telah bersama dengan saya sebelum ini untuk training, kita akan cuba refine your pitching after every page lah. Mana kita akan buat banyak kali kita akan drill 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 kan. Tapi kali ini kita nak buat uh, competitive sikit. So cara bentuk program dia berbeza. Dalam masa yang sama, uh, Bong ada cash, ada ni ada apa hadiah kan? Itu yang apa picture terbaik, betul Bong? Yes, uh, untuk dua uh, picture hadiah. terbaik kita ada hadiah berupa satu voucher minyak mm -hmm. Satu lagi kita ada voucher Lazada so, yang, ber, yang bernilai berapa tu? Bernilai RM50 <laughs> Okeylah, jadilah uh, so, <laughs> yeah, Alright, so uh, terima kasih juga kepada semua in terms of feedback, jadi saya tak boleh nak bagi feedback uh, sebab itulah sebab kita nak buat penilaian jadi macam tak ada pula untuk kita bagi feedback right after every page kan so kali ni kita bagi feedback secara umum dan secara awak lah yang tidak tertumpu kepada sesiapa kepada mana-mana picture alright so uh, moving forward dia bila pitching ni uh, kita nak share feedback sikit in terms of lima perkara sajalah yang pertama uh, kita harus faham bila program bersama dengan Youth Magic ni selalu ber, ber, apa, berkitaran social enterprise Social enterprise ni kita harus sedar bahawa dia masih lagi tetap satu bentuk enterprise. It's still an enterprise, it needs to make money. So it is not a charity. Bila kita kata it's not a charity, maknanya kita tak boleh uh, operate atau kita tak boleh move as a charity relying on donations. Tak boleh macam tu. Kena ada business model dalam mana your business idea, it's a business idea, it must be sustainable. So there must be a model that makes it sustainable and independent to stand on its own. Uh, so bila kita cerita tentang pitch ni pula, although pitching ideas is not specifically or exclusively for businesses, macam boleh je pitch idea kepada uh, uh, apa, a, do, uh, a donor or a person that is giving a grant. But the purpose of today's, uh, the, the whole structure of the training is for you to pitch to investors. Betul? So when you want to pitch to investors, there are certain things that you want to consider yang anda perlu ambil kira. Yang pertama is sustainability lah. Ha, itu dia berkait rapat dengan the fact that we are social entrepreneur. Social entrepreneurs ni maknanya we have a social aspect to our business but it is still a business so there must be an aspect of sustainability. So you must have a plan on how to make your business sustainable. Macam mana nak buat duit? Bila cerita tentang social enterprise, you don't need to maximize profits to make it accessible. But still, you need to make some level of profit to make it sustainable. Ha, macam tu. So, uh, that would be leading on to the third point. Dalam mana? 
mesti ada clear projections. Projections ni bukan sahaja menggambarkan bisnes anda kepada investor tapi juga penting untuk menunjukkan anda ada wawasan sekurang-kurangnya 5 tahun ke hadapan in terms of expansion plan. So projection mesti ada. So in terms of what percentage of growth are you anticipating for your business. Uh, third, uh, fourth would be focus and lean more on your UVP or your unique value proposition. Unique value proposition ni sangat penting sebab businesses tak semestinya a great new idea. It doesn't need to be a new, totally original idea. iPhone pun, he, apa Steve Jobs didn't invent the telephone. Kan? But what is unique about the iPhone? I think yang paling penting. So you don't need to have a completely original idea that is new, that has no one done done before. Tak semestinya. But your unique value value proposition must be really, really good. Uh, so to emphasis on your UVP or your value proposition, what sets you apart? Kena betul-betul clear, kena betul-betul cakap supaya dia click with your audience, with your potential investor, with your potential consumer. Orang nak tahu, what are you selling? You are selling not just the services, but what makes your services unique. All right. So uh, another pro tip is that uh, this is a practical uh, apa, practical feedback. Lah. Uh, memanglah kita sekarang ni, Theoretically or conceptually, we are in the ideation stage, kan? Kita nak uh, apa, grill the idea, nak improve the idea, and then baru kita akan proceed. Tetapi, uh, a good thing, uh, a good uh, point that you need to remember when it comes to pitch, people always respond better to uh, ideas that have already a proven concept. Uh, maknanya katanya, you already have the business running, you just need seed funding to expand. You just need seed funding to meet demand. You need funding for growth. Tapi you memang dah, you memang ada demand. Orang memang nak, orang memang berminat. It's just that you cannot meet that demand. Kalau if you're at that stage, memang ada potential client semua, the funding will just come easily like that. It's as compared to still in the initial ideation stage, dalam mana we still nak proof of concept, so investors still akan teragak-agak lagi. Walaupun an idea is seemingly attractive, it's seemingly good, tapi, if there's no some sort of proven uh, macam case study, orang macam uh, macam ter- masih lagi teragak-agak. So, that's it for my feedback. Thank you so much uh, for Youth Venture for organizing this. Uh, I'm king in the scores right now. So, I hope uh, kita akan buat yang terbaik lah in terms of the scoring. Uh, so, back to you, Bang. Right. So, in terms of scoring, kita akan kira dulu. Then, uh, the winner will be announced through your email. We will send you an email berserta dengan dia punya hadiah. Right. So, hello. Dengar? Dengar, dengar. Ah. Clear, clear. clear. So, kita akan bagi guna email. So, we will put uh, send you an email dengan dia punya hadiah lah to those yang menang. So, kita akan announce hari ni. Okay. Um... Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to start now. Okay, so... Um... Hi, good afternoon uh, to judges and audience. I'm Nurul from uh, Athena Empowers, where Athena carries the meaning of wise and impersonate strength. So, um, single mothers are one of the most adversely affected demographics during the COVID-19 pandemic. Eventually, this has affected their mental health, which leads them to become demotivated in continuing their life. Um, how do you guys feel about it? So. Uh, the solution that Athena tries to implement here is by conducting an empowerment program uh, where the target market that we would like to focus um, on is a single mother who owns a business from age uh, 27 to 37 years old in rural area. So how does the program work? Uh, participants sign up for the empowerment programs, attend courses and activities among the single mother community, and matching among participants for partnership and companionship. So as for the value proposition, uh, we are focusing on faster outcome, uh, specifically in mentorship, companionship, networking, uh, mind therapy, matching bodies, and business opportunity. So this is at the goals. Um, we have three goals. So as for the first goals, uh, for one week, we're going to val- uh, validate the business idea at least to 70 potential customers in Klang very uh, sorry uh, there's a mistake over there in rural area so uh, for the second goal as for uh, we're going to take two weeks to conduct a trial session uh, for free for the first 20 potential customers and uh, get back their feedback 
So the third goal is going to be um, approaching more, we're going to approach more on uh, NGOs or single mothers community and propose a collaboration for the program. Mm, so this is a uh, this is the team that I've been working with. Uh, we have a CEO, Hasmu Hanafia, and Julia as a uh, direct social impact. And Fazlina is a business development. And me uh, as a sales and marketing executive. So if you guys have any, um, would like to collaborate more or would like to know more, uh, this is the information here. So thank you. So All right. Uh, thank you, Zati. minutes and 15 seconds. Okay, a bit a bit fast paced. Usually we wanna have a sweet spot between 2.5 to 2 minutes and 30 seconds to 2 minutes and 45 seconds, but it's okay. Uh, great pitch. Yeah, yeah, great pitch is at T. No problem, great pitch. Uh, the question I have for you is uh, can you explain further in terms of your uh, business model or how are you going to make revenue from your business idea? Okay, um first of all, um I'm can you go to the slide? Do you have that slide? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm sorry to inform that uh, I, I didn't put in the slide. Okay, so maybe I just uh, roughly explain to you. Sure. I hope you guys uh, get the point. So as for the revenue, um, we are planning to, um, we have a, it's a two types of uh, revenue model, which is first, uh, we're going to get the mod, uh, revenue from a one-time program, which is as for the one-time program, we're focusing on um, like a, uh, one time uh, session, which is uh, the participants can choose uh, any of the days uh, that is available. So uh, we're going to have a session within the group. So uh, this way we uh, make a venue. This is very uh, for the short term uh, session program or program. Okay. So for the second one, uh, we are focusing on uh, getting the revenue from the uh, collaboration. Um, whereby uh, we would like to collaborate with uh, the NGOs or um, any of the uh, so, uh, single mothers uh, community, sorry, uh, whereby uh, we collaborate with them. Uh, we try to um, offer them uh, based on their expectation or based on their uh, request, uh, personal request. And then uh, another one is um, how do we get the uh, planning to get the revenue is from a long term um program which is uh the participants can the participants can um like how 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 we call that sorry <laughs> i forgot the words um okay. i mean uh for a long term uh commitment so that i mean uh, for example okay so for example it's uh, like subscription you mean ah yeah subscription yes yeah, subscribe thank you so much <laughs> i look with it when you wait sorry okay yeah, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. like um, a monthly subscription. Yes, that's a word. Okay, so monthly subscription. Um, the special thing is, uh, about monthly subscription is that we're going to focus on like, we're going to have one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, there's a difference between one-time and monthly subscription. As for one-time subscription, we are planning like to have uh, just to gather around with the single mother community, I mean, uh, in, within a group. But for the... Uh, for the monthly subscription, we're going to have an extra, which is, I mean, uh, a special part is that we can have a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, it's either, uh, you can choose either you, you would like to have one-on-one -on -one session with the mentor, it's either mentor or uh, with other participants. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we, we, we try to generate the revenue from the program. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Zati. So let's open the floor for the other judges. Maybe you have comments or questions. Yeah, anyone? Saya nampak Emma angkat tangan tadi. Okay, Emma share Emma. Tanya, <laughs> yes, Emma, do you have any question? 